This is a video of arterial blood gas sampling produced as part of the Common Currency Project at the Dalhousie University Faculty of Medicine. Before beginning any procedure, be sure to wash your hands properly using the accepted technique and follow all applicable universal precautions in this procedure that involves protective eyewear and gloves. The purpose of arterial blood gas sampling is to assess the patient's respiratory status as well as their acid-base balance. The equipment necessary for arterial blood gas sampling is protective eyewear and gloves for universal precautions, provodyne iodine swab followed by an alcohol swab, an arterial blood gas sampling kit, 2 by 2 gauze, and a bag of ice to put the sample on to send to the lab. We'll begin the procedure with performing the Allen's test. The most common site chosen for blood gas sampling is the radial artery of the non-dominant hand. Once you've chosen the hand, before you can proceed with the procedure, you must first perform an Allen's test which indicates whether or not there's collateral circulation to the limb. The Allen's test is performed as follows. First I'm going to palpate with my fingers the radial artery. Next I'm going to palpate the ulnar artery again with my fingers. If I can't feel the ulnar artery, I'm going to palpate the area closest to where I think it would be located. I'm now going to ask my patient to please make a fist as tight as she can. I'm going to ask her to maintain that position for approximately 10 seconds. And I'm going to now occlude both the radial and the ulnar artery. After enough time has elapsed, I can ask my patient to please release her fist. And I can release my grasp on the ulnar artery. And what I'm watching for is good flow returning to that hand. The hand pinks up again nice. I now have a positive Allen's test and I am okay to proceed with the procedure. I now have my patient seated comfortably on the stretcher. I'm going to tuck a rolled up towel underneath her wrist. That will help hyperextend the wrist a little bit which will bring the artery a little closer to the surface and make it a little easier again for me to palpate that artery. I'm going to feel for the artery again. It's right there. And the first thing I need to do is clean the area. First cleaning is going to be with the Providine alcohol. And I'm going to start in the middle and clean in a circular motion. After I've allowed that time to dry, my next step is to wipe away the uh, Providine with an alcohol swab. While I'm waiting for the skin prep to dry, I can open my blood gas kit. And the kit is made up of three different uh, pieces. First thing is an orange air ball, which I'm going to use to um, expel any excess air from the syringe. There is a black cap to go over the uh, syringe for transport to the lab. And a 3cc heparinized uh, syringe with a needle attached. I'm going to pull back slightly on the plunger so that I know that once I've got that needle in the artery, it's going to be able to push back to fill the syringe with the pulsations from the artery. I'm going to slide the cap off of my needle and make sure that I can see the bevel so that I know I can go and bevel up when I insert the needle through the skin. I'm going to hold the syringe a little differently for the blood gas procedure. Um, it's going to be at a sharper angle, closer to 45 degrees, and I'm going to hold it much like a dart or a pen. I'm going to feel for that pulse. And that's truly my only landmark for um, knowing where I'm going to break the skin with this needle is feeling that pulse underneath my finger. I've got my needle right there just ready to go in when I'm confident that I'm in the right area. And the last thing I do before I go through the skin with that needle is I'm just going to roll my finger back a little bit out of the way and now I can put the needle into the skin. 
Once I've put the needle through the skin, I next watch for a flash of blood into the hub of the needle. This tells me that I've accessed the artery, and once I've done that, I can watch for the blood to pulsate back into the syringe. An adequate amount of blood in the syringe would be one and a half to two cc's. Once I've obtained an adequate blood sample, which is anywhere from one and a half to two cc's of blood in my syringe, I'm gonna cover the area with my two by two gauze and very quickly pull the needle out of the skin. I can do one of two things at this time. I can stand here and I can apply pressure myself to the area for approximately five minutes, uh, unless the patient is on anticoagulant therapy, in which, ta which case I should double that to 10 minutes. If my patient is cooperative, I can ask her, would she please apply some pressure over that area for me until I come back and tell her otherwise. While my patient is holding pressure over the site, I'm now going to take my needle and syringe over to my air cube, and I'm going to insert the needle straight up and down into the cube. I want to put it in far enough that the bevel is covered, but not too far that it goes right through the entire cube. Once I've done that, I'm going to push down on the plunger here, and what that's going to do is it's going to expel any extra air that might have gotten into the syringe and will not be left around to affect the results. I can now remove the cube and needle as one and attach the black cap to the tip of my syringe. I can give it a roll to make sure that that heparin has dissolved, and I can place it into the bag of ice and send it off to the lab. My last step is to dispose of the needle and cube in the proper sharps container.